Here in Germany, thousands of steelworkers have been protesting against EU state aid rules blocking a massive cash injection aimed at making the industry more climate friendly. Economy Minister Robert Habeck reassured thousands of ThyssenKrupp steelworkers in Duisburg that a deal with Brussels is on the verge of completion. The company says it needs subsidies of 2 billion euros for a new green steelmaking plant that will be powered by climate neutral hydrogen and is due to begin production in 2026. This ThyssenKrupp steel plant is part of an industry that accounts for nearly 3% of Germany's carbon emissions. Iron and steelmaking produces around 20 million tons of carbon dioxide a year, thanks to blast furnace technology. But that's set to change gradually. The first blast furnace powered by hydrogen will go into operation in three years. Special pipes will need to be installed for hydrogen to be delivered continuously so that production runs smoothly. Germany's steel industry plans a 30% reduction in its carbon emissions by 2030. And by 2045, it wants to make steel production carbon neutral. That would mean only using green hydrogen. The switch to greener technologies will cost more than 2 billion euros for Germany's largest steelmaker, ThyssenKrupp. The government plans to support businesses so that the EU's climate targets can be implemented. Green steel will be significantly more expensive, and that's why the industry needs the government's support to remain competitive on the global market where Chinese steel producers are the biggest competitor. For more on this, let's bring in DW Climate reporter Louise Osborne. Louise, welcome along. Now, steel is a notoriously dirty industry. How realistic is this target to become carbon neutral by 2045? So it's not impossible, but it's going to be very difficult. Uh, companies are moving in the right direction. They're looking at investing in green steel through hydrogen, um, but there are lots of problems with that. Um, for example, uh, there is just not enough capacity to make the amount of hydrogen that would be needed at the moment to, to make steel. Um, there is also going to be new infrastructure that is going to be needed, and there are high costs that are going to be involved in that, and, and it's going to be costly for people buying steel in the future, for the moment anyway. Um, but it needs to be done. 8% of greenhouse gas emissions uh, are created by the steel industry globally, and so that really needs to be brought down. So, again, it's going to be difficult, but it can be done. OK, so you're saying it's not impossible. We saw images there of Tucson Krupp uh, workers protesting because they want to ensure that the government gives them enough money to build this green steel plant. We got a little bit of a flavour in the report, but maybe you could explain to us what exactly is green steel? So steel is made using coal at the moment. And the idea is that uh, iron oxide is taken out of the ground and to pur purify the iron, they need to put in uh, the, the coal so that the, uh, the, uh, the atoms fr from the oxygen from the iron oxide can uh, react with the coal and that makes vast amounts of carbon dioxide. And that is the major problem. Uh, what they can do is decide to take out the, the coal and to use hydrogen instead so that the oxygen is then reacting with hydrogen and making water, which is great. If you ha then have renewable sources that are making the, the hydrogen, then that can lead to, to green steel. Um, also, the energy that is used, if it's renewable instead of coal, then that will lead to a, uh, an environmentally friendly product, basically. OK, so that sounds very promising, but you did also mention cost. Green steel is more expensive than its dirty equivalent. How can builders be encouraged to buy it instead of the cheaper alternative? Well, I mean, the whole economy is under pressure to decarbonise. And, you know, consumers are putting pressure on, on builders and also others to decarbonise not only what they are producing themselves, but also the supply chain that uh, that is coming from. So builders are going to have to, in the future, look for green alternatives to make their consumers happier. So that's one side. Governments are also putting pressure on, on um, industries to decarbonise so that they can meet their green goals. Costs of hydrogen-based uh, steel production is going to be very high to begin with, but that will reduce also. Um, so from 2030 to 2040, that, that price is due to come down and will probably also be cheaper than coal-based steel eventually.
Okay, so looking beyond Germany, China has always been known as a producer of very cheap and very dirty steel. Are there similar efforts there to green the industry? I mean, that's a really important question because China produces around 60% of steel at the moment and it's a big player in the industry. Um, there is movement also there to move to green steel. For example, uh, they have six major world players that are, are making steel and at least half of them are already investing in hydrogen-based steel. Um, so they are moving in that direction. They also have decarbonisation goals as a country that they have to stick to. They want to peak on their carbon emissions by 2030 and become completely carbon neutral by 2060. If they are going to do that, steel needs to play a part because it's the second largest industry with regards to carbon emissions in China. Um, and we're just going to have to see how economic growth goes as to whether China will stick with that plan or not. OK, so things are tentatively going in the right direction. Louise Osborne, thank you so much for breaking it all down for us.